Hey there, it's Paul Aware. How are you doing today? Are you as excited as I am about this day that the Lord has made? I tell you what, I am getting so full off of the word of God. I am able to miss a meal. Woo, that's a big deal. If you understand who I am and yeah, that part. Mm -hmm. Listen, let's go ahead and get ready to glorify the Father. We'll start by praising him, worshiping him. Let's go into this song. I've got Trey McLaughlin ready to release. Hallelujah. A great musical mashup. This is Trey McLaughlin and his song can be found on YouTube. We are not infringing on any copyrights at all because we got the song of YouTube. Guess where we are? YouTube. That's right. So listen, don't forget, if you don't have your body and blood representation ready for communion, take a pause. Go grab it really quickly so we can flow right into consecration and repentance before we take communion with the Father. Are you ready to worship and praise and sing and give God some glory? Let's go. I'm praying my singing voice comes through during these 21 days. I'm going to sing regardless, so be ready. Thank you. 
11 minutes. I bless the Lord. Let's pause here. Hallelujah. Let us praise the Lord. It is his breath that's in our lungs. Glory to God. I thank God for you today. I want you to hang out with me. Let's get ready for communion. Greetings. I'm Paula Ware. I am your hostess. Again, we are here to glorify the Father. And I would like for you to join me at this moment. We are going to prepare ourselves in repentance and consecration to prepare to partake in the Lord's Supper. So if you would, take a moment of silence to release to the Father anything that would be considered a sin, if that is where you are an iniquity, a trespass, a transgression, or shortcoming. This is a time that is necessary before we partake in the Lord's Supper. Let's take a moment of silence. Amen. If you need more time, please, by all means, pause the video here. Make sure that you have your representation for the body and the blood of Jesus Christ to partake. Amen. I'll be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting with verse 23 through 34. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. I'm taking the broken uh, representation.
Amen. And I'm reading from the King James Version. 25 says, After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Let us drink. Amen. Verse 26 says, For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do shew the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. The Lord is speaking here about consecrating and repenting before you partake. 28 says, But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Verse 30 says, For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. We need to remember that. Verse 31 says, For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. 32, But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. 33, Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. 34, and if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Hallelujah. This is the word of God. Amen. Hey, fam. Isn't it a refreshing experience to be able to take communion and remember Reflect on what Jesus has done for us. Ooh, listen, yesterday in prayer, I had a vision. It was not a pleasant one. God reminded me when we are reminded and reflecting during communion that Jesus bore everything in his body on the cross, right? Some versions say a tree. Would you believe? Well, let me just share. I had a vision. I saw someone hanging from a tree by a rope on the neck. And to put that together, to think about what Jesus did, right? The man who hangs from a tree is cursed. He took the curse. And I think about all the things that he has delivered me from and all the things that he took in his body, he bore for me and my sins, that I might die to sin and live for righteousness. And by his stripes, I'm healed. Like that. It does not mean I got to keep suffering over the mistakes I've made if I have properly gone before God. Now, I'm not saying you just haphazardly, oh, God will forgive me. No. We need to spend some time with God so that we are truly healed and we are truly delivered and that we don't continue to come back to these things, right? That's what we're learning in Galatians 5. Here's our sick. Galatians 5, Paul is telling us, do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage because Jesus has done it for us. But if we keep going back to our mess, it's like a dog going back to his vomit. Oh, come on, Holy Spirit. That's biblical. I'm going to continue with Galatians 5 until the Lord tells me differently. So today is day six. Welcome. Let's jump right in. We're going to pick up where we left off on uh, the past two times that I've been with you. We have talked about yokes of bondage. It's real. It is real. We're not going to stay there because we're going to eat this word. Amen. So let's pick up. I believe we left off around verse two. Let me just read it to you again. Verse two says, indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, 
Christ will profit you nothing. We're just going to flow. Verse 3 says, And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become estranged, estranged, verse 4, from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by law, you have fallen from grace. For we, through the Spirit, eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. Amen. So we're going to just segue right into this because I think we have talked plenty and spent enough time talking about these yokes of bondage and these things that can keep you entangled with a demonic spirit, an evil spirit, if you will. Let's not be afraid to talk about evil spirits. Listen, I'm in the book of Hosea for personal study, and God mentions A couple of times, my people perish from lack of knowledge. My people perish from understanding. Let's get some knowledge and understanding, right? And all you're getting, get some understanding. Amen. And so we're talking about circumcision. I think I was about to say consecration. Circumcision, being circumcised or not circumcised. Now, there's a physical circumcision we understand as... um, Young boys, commonly in young boys, they get circumcised, right? That is also a religious practice. But there's also a spiritual circumcision that male or female can take on, and that is for your heart to be circumcised. Let Jesus return that heart of stone to a heart of flesh. Let the Lord take you through his word so that you can be delivered and set free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. So we are going to come to this part of the scripture that talks about love fulfilling the law. Mm, It's so good. It's so good. And we're going to talk about love. Are you ready? Are you feeling like love is in the atmosphere? (laughs) That would be a feeling. Well, we're not going to go that route. However, I want you to discern the love in the word of God, right? Get it in your spirit, the love of Christ. Let's talk about it. We'll pick up at verse 7. Verse 7 says, you ran well. This is Paul speaking, right, to the Galatians. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? That's a question. Verse 8 says, this persuasion does not come from him who calls you. Hmm. 9, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. What are they talking about? I connect it to the the saying where people say one bad apple, apple can spoil the whole bunch. A little bit of leaven. Think about what leaven does. If you're making bread, you, you add yeast, which is a leaven. It causes it to expand. Let's think about this word now. A little leaven expands the whole lump. So a lump might be something little. You can start out with one little biscuit, be one little roll about this big. And once you let it rest with that yeast, the leaven activates and it expands. My Lord. Verse 10 says, I have confidence in you, in the Lord, that you will have no other mind, but he who troubles you shall bear his judgment. Whoever he is. 11 says, and I, brethren, Paul is speaking, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? Why are we still preaching circumcision? And still we are persecuted. If circumcision is the solution, why are we still suffering? persecution? That's a question. Let's hang out there. If circumcision is the answer, the solution that many battle for, that many require, why are we still suffering? If that was the case, there would be no man suffering who has been 
physically circumcised. Now, when we talk about spiritual circumcision, we should also see that perse persecution must flee because your heart has changed. A circumcised heart is a clean heart. Think about that song we sing, Tamla Man, created me a clean heart. That means a circumcised heart. All right, let's keep going. You're not convinced yet. Okay. Then the offense of the cross has ceased. If the solution to the persecution is circumcision, then we should have no trouble. The offenses should be done with. Paul is going in right here. Let's continue. Verse 12 says, I wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. <laughs> Lord, how you cut yourself off from yourself? Oh, my God. Mm, mm, mm. Listen to that again. I could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. Wow. Let them do it. Let them cut themselves off. You don't have to do it. We're hoping that they cut themselves off on their own. Even cut themselves off from themselves. How many of you know that you can be a hindrance to you? To yourself? Oh, listen. Apparently, you've never had a Job experience. Oh, my, my, my. Well, my Job experience, as the Lord would teach me, has to do with humility. Uh -huh. Pride versus humility. That's just one area out of four, specifically, that he is teaching me about myself. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> He's so loving and so kind. Yep. That's amazing. That's a, that's a powerful kind of love. For you, brethren, verse 13, have been called to liberty. What is liberty? Freedom and justice. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. What is the flesh? Your desires, your will. Mm -hmm. But through love, serve one another. Are you serving one another? Are you serving others? Are you being loving while you serve others? I like to whistle so I may interject here and there. Verse 14 says, for all the law is fulfilled in one word. Anybody know what it is? You know what it is? Let's talk about it. Even in this, in quotes, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. That's it. That's it. You'll love your neighbor as you love yourself. Let me read verse 15 and then we're going to talk about this. 15 says, but if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. Ooh, Paul's talking about a real fight right there. My Lord, a real fight in the flesh. And so shall it be in the spirit. My God, brothers and sisters, I want to talk to you today about love. What's love got to do with it? Listen, that's what the Lord has been speaking to me. Love has something to do with yokes of bondage. Ah, oh, what? Come on, Lord. Let's talk about some things. We've got five areas we are going to talk about today. Are you ready? I know you're ready. I got my notes ready. Amen. We're going to talk about five hot topics that have to do with being able to love someone else as you love yourself. <laughs> Here we go. It must be important. It's written in the Bible. Let's talk about it. All right. The first one we want to talk about. So I am talking about some common things that cause us to struggle with being loving to one another. Mm. or to love one another. The first one, fear of vulnerability. This is big. 
This is so big, but God is bigger. Hallelujah. That's the good news for today. Remember, the enemy only got a third of the angels to come to, to, to the earth, right? To be kicked out. A third were kicked out with him. Two thirds still remain. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We still have more fighting for us that are with us than those that are against us. Fear of vulnerability. What in the world are you talking about? Well, vulnerability has to do with you opening yourself up to others, right? That's first step. And that requires emotional, emotional vulnerability, that word right there, which can be intimidating sometimes. Past hurts, betrayals, or fear of rejection make people hesitant to open up. I could preach right here. But I'm not. But I do have a testimony. I started it yesterday. So if you tuned in yesterday, you heard one of many. That one got me to Jesus, though. Hallelujah. And what the enemy wants to do is to create in you a heart that has a long arm extended in front of you so that you don't trust people, you're still broken, you still have some deep, deep wounds because of rejection and fear of going through it again. Oh, let me tell you, that fear doesn't have to just remain in the area of vulnerability. I also shared a testimony about the fear I had just a few weeks ago, last month, actually, that became a physical spirit, a physical demon, physically manifesting. Yep, it's real. Okay, so when you're dealing with those things, you become cautious, you become guarded. You do not want to open yourself up for fear that the past pains you experienced could come again. Oh, let me just tell you, when you get in that mindset, if you allow that fear to poke its head up, it's ready to just charge right on in. So we must deal with that evil spirit. We must get delivered from it. God, deliver us from evil. That's what you say when you pray like Jesus told us to pray. Deliver us from evil. It's so important. And it's impossible to serve God without faith. We can't serve God in fear. Ooh. What is the impact of this, though? Fear of vulnerability does have an impact. And that is, hurt can keep you from forming deep, loving, kind relationships, causing you to remain distant and sometimes even isolated. Mm -hmm. Been there more than once. More than 10 times, more than 20 times. Anyway, it's not about me. Hallelujah. Okay, that's number one. Number two, unresolved past trauma, right? You see how it's all feeding into the next one and this thing? Uh -huh. What do you mean unresolved past trauma? I'm talking about the painful experiences, again, from the past, like family conflict. Loss, abusive relationships. Can I pause right here? Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something about having a heart of compassion. If we lack a heart of compassion, do you know that when people begin to share their struggles, you will judge them with unrighteous judgment, ungodly judgment? I said unrighteous judgment because they're, they're, that is allowable. There's an allowable judgment in the Bible. It's called righteous judgment. It happens through Christ. It happens through the word of God. It is released through God, right? Found in scripture. When you begin to judge people on things they've experienced or things that they're challenged by without the lens of compassion, you will compare them to your life that may be free of trauma that may not look or sound like someone pouring out their truth 
about a traumatic past. Do you know what can happen when you begin to judge people? For example, I just saw a post yesterday of a woman who jumped off of Niagara Falls with her two small children. She did not survive that. They did not survive that. The comments were so vicious. I hope she burns in hell. She should, she should, she should. I'm talking fiery darts after fiery darts. If you don't understand the mindset of a person, it takes, number one, to allow that thought to manifest and believe that's what you should do, hush your mouth. Hush your mouth with your unrighteous judgment. Am I saying it's okay that she committed suicide and her children are dead as well? Absolutely not. What I'm saying is, what led her to that? What led her to have the strength to say, this is the day and this is how I'm going to do it? Such a traumatic death, not just for herself, but to take her children. She had no hope. Something here had to happen for her to follow through with the suicide. Right? It's suicide and murder. Those young children didn't have the opportunity to make a mindful, mature choice not to go with their mother. So to condemn even more, I hope she burns in hell. Obviously, you've not read the Bible. Because if you know what hell is, I wouldn't speak that on anybody. We should be praying for that soul of the mother and the souls of those children. The spirit, may they rest in peace. Lord, forgive her, for she knew not what she was doing. Hear me well. I'm talking spiritually. To go through with suicide, there's a spiritual disconnect. God is not in suicide. God is not going to tell you to take your life. What does that mean? That means there was a demon. There was a demon that at some point she came in agreement with. I don't know if she was a believer. I shared my testimony. I believe God, right? In the God that I knew at the time that suicide came to my mind, I wanted to die. I didn't know this Jesus. I didn't know scripture, but I loved him in the capacity at which I could love him. If someone doesn't have the capacity to love like Jesus Christ, guess what happens? There's a crack. There may even be a foothold where the devil can come in at any time and convince you to do something that God would never tell you to do. It's not written, nor is it spoken. It would not be the guidance of the Father. Something had to happen to her that she agreed and believed was true enough for her to think that suicide was the solution. Death was the solution. That's not a sound mind. When we know that we're dealing with someone who does not have a sound mind, it means that there's a compassionate place in our heart where we are able to say, God, what happened? What would make someone do that? But if hate is in your heart and there's no sign of compassion, oh, you would say things like she should go to hell. I hope she goes to hell is what somebody said. May she burn in hell is what somebody said. Ooh, what does it take for that to come out of your mouth? What does it take for you to not feel a shaking in your spirit, my God, what happened? Dear Lord, listen, we got to pray for, for what has been left behind. Jesus prayed on the cross when those people had already beaten him. He prayed for others, for they know not what they do. Listen, when you understand spiritual warfare, thank you, Holy Spirit. I believe somebody's going to experience your heart being softened right now by what 
the Holy Spirit is sharing with me. When you understand spiritual warfare, like Jesus did on that cross, you know why we don't have that compassion? Is because we have not consumed, eaten, and believed what we have consumed and eaten in God's written word. If we study Ephesians 6, starting with verse 10, God begins to help us by sharing with us right through what Paul is speaking to the Ephesians about your whole armor of God, not your whole armor of Paula, not your whole armor of yourself, because we leave God out of it. We would be casting people. We would be throwing people ourselves over Niagara Falls. We would be throwing people to be hung on the tree. We would be killing people ourselves if we relied on our own thoughts, our own flesh, our own processes and ways of punishing people. Mm-hmm. That's where the world is right now. We want to punish people. We want to punish people who don't vote like we vote. We want to punish people who don't believe like we believe. We want to punish people who don't serve God like we serve God. We want to punish people who don't think like we think, who don't act like we act, who don't believe us. The list is long. But when you put on the whole armor of God, hallelujah, <laughs> In the order that he tells you to put it on. He doesn't tell you to start with your helmet of salvation. That's not the word. That's, that's not the order. The very first thing God tells us to put on when we're putting on the whole armor of God is truth. See, one of the areas we need to be refined or God circumcised is that we don't always begin with the truth. Jesus is the truth, the way, and the life. If we rely on man's facts first, we'll, we, we're we going to put that armor on, or we won't have it on at all, first of all. If we don't have it on at all for the day, hallelujah, then you risk the enemy's fiery darts like this woman did. She didn't have on her, own, her whole armor because the armor would have caused her to start with truth. There's truth in my belly. Mm -hmm. because the spirit of God lives within you, oh God. Mm -hmm. That Holy Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God, would have created an unction in her to pause. The enemy, once he gets in, man, he can speak to you so quickly and have you so convinced so quickly. You have already prepared yourself. Car is full. You've got enough gas to get where you know you're supposed to go to end it all you got a plan you ain't telling nobody people who are really gonna commit suicide they don't tell people people who really want help and god has slipped in some intervention or oh, they're gonna reach out to somebody mm -hmm. god will make a way hallelujah listen when we come in agreement with the enemy we have set ourselves up for failure If people aren't praying in this regard, we're set up for failure. If we're not reading the word of God, we're set up for failure for each day. For each day. So the compassion that God is wanting us to connect to has to do with the compassion of Christ. Until we know what Christ-like love looks like, will operate in our flesh, in our own understanding. Mm -hmm. In alignment with this wicked heart. It's hard. Because we're not reading the word. Because we don't pray. We don't talk to God. We don't have a relationship with the Father. The very one who could snatch you off your tiptoes on the edge of jumping off the ledge to jump into the river. Gotta have a relationship. Gotta have a relationship. We've got to repent, not just for ourselves, but for others. It's biblical. God have mercy. Lord, please have mercy. 
Now, I'm not saying to the point of where you hinder what God's plan is. However, we're talking about death right here. Okay. We are talking about unresolved trauma that is designed by the enemy's plans to take you out of here so that you won't be able to see or hear love. The eyes of your heart are blinded because the trauma is still working on the inside. Hallelujah. God help us. I'm asking today that you will consider the heart of Christ. As you go study the word, you're going to see, as you continue to study the walk of Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ, you will see his heart through persecution of all kinds, trauma of all kinds, my God, even with the people in his hometown. You know it's some family there, right? Okay, just so you connect. So I said all that because I had some heavy experiences with trauma. And I can speak personally what it's like to be tempted by suicide. It's a spirit. It's a spirit of death. That voice is so bold. It's not a whisper always. Sometimes it's very bold. Just kill yourself. Just drive off right here. I've heard that before. Right? Because there's, there's levels to these spirits that dwell. Listen, sometimes there are thousands My Lord, thousands. We could be a host of thousands of demonic spirits. It's biblical. It's called legions. Holy God. Unresolved trauma can be connected to legions of demons. Now look at your, your frame, your body structure. How does that sound possible? Well, when you understand spiritual warfare, I'm encouraging you to study the word of God, because in this season of what's happening in this world, you need to understand spiritual warfare. You need to know what it is. Amen. Not in this lesson, not in today's session. Amen. If the Lord leads me to share more, I will. But really, this is what we're talking about at this time. This is spiritual warfare. Amen. And so we're talking about how to resolve it. How do we resolve it? What is What does Galatians 5 starting at verse um, 7, begin to, no, Galatians 5, starting at verse 6, it begins to give us a solution. Faith working through love. Two things, faith working through love. Amen? All right, so unresolved past trauma. Be empathetic toward people. I'm not saying you always have to be sympathetic, but at least be empathetic that you would take a pause and say, hmm, wow, what, what would make someone do that? What would make someone um, not open up? What would make someone seem so distant? Those are, those are real good questions. Amen. And so people who have this experience with unresolved, unresolved past trauma tend to be um, self-protecting, they, they, mm -mm, you can only get so close, right? And that makes it difficult to trust others and show affection. <laughs> I hear you, Holy Spirit. Can I share something with you that will connect this to real life? I didn't grow up. Um, now this is no shade no um i don't mean this in an evil way but i didn't grow up in a home where we said i love you all the time i was actually in my 30s oh my god oh my god i just had a revelation i didn't read the bible till i was 32 and i believed at the same time that i heard i love you from my parents Ah, Jesus. Ooh, I got to go look that up, my Lord. Oh, how profound. I experienced the love of Christ in a totally different way as I came into Christ and gave him my life, which apparently had something in the spirit realm to do with hearing love from my parents. 
Y'all, it was such a shocker. I couldn't even respond. I was truly dumbfounded. And once I was able to gather myself, I said it back. That was not common. But guess what? It wasn't common for them. And it wasn't common for their parents. And it wasn't common for their parents, right? This is not because people are evil. It's because they don't know. Not for everybody. Many times it's because people don't know. They don't have that experience. They don't have that capacity to even say, I love you. They don't have that capacity to show, holy God, love and the love of Christ. Ooh, here we are. We're talking about it. Trauma can be one of the reasons why. My Lord, let's continue. Number three, self-centeredness. Here's the word. Pride. Self-centeredness is pride. This is one of the reasons why people struggle with loving others and loving themselves. And are. (laughs) So, self-centeredness and pride can be the focus of one's own needs and desires. And can make it difficult to prioritize others. Think about your condition, your situation, or somebody might come to mind. We're going to pray. And that can lead to defensiveness. Think about your coworkers. Dismissiveness. Think about your friends. Or lack of empathy. That's what I shared about this woman, right? Stone her. Listen, oh my God. This type of mindset limits one's ability to connect with others, often leading to strained relationships and feelings of isolation. Deliver me, O Lord. Listen. Mm. Mm. Wow. I bless God. Pride comes before the fall. If you are dealing with fall pride, I want you to know the Bible says pride comes before destruction. You are on a destructive path if you have pride. You may be so proud you don't even know you have pride. That means you need to go before the Father and ask him, consecrate me, O Lord. Clean me out. Excavate my soul. Get in there and let me know. If you are dealing with pride, you will be amazed if you're not already. Some of the trauma you will experience, some of the consequential traumatic events you will experience because of pride. Okay, it's not you. I hear you. It's not you. Maybe it was your parent. Maybe it was a grandparent. Maybe it was a great-great-grandparent. Listen, if it's in the bloodline, it's going to land somewhere. You should pray accordingly. Break it if it's not already broken. If you don't think it's you, pray for God to expose it and show you where it is. Break that thing with the Father through his scripture. Amen. Woo, the spirit is good today. My God. Listen, I I believe this is heavy for somebody, but know that the Holy Spirit is here. I've already welcomed him in. Holy Spirit is with you. Welcome him in. Usher him in. Praise and worship and prayer. Usher in. Welcome in the Holy Spirit of God. Father, we need you now. I thank you for your blood. I thank you for your hedge of protection. I thank you for your kingdom angels. You said they will lift us up in their hands so that we do not hit our feet against a stone. There it is. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We got to speak these things out loud, right? I don't want to be so comfortable that I don't come back and usher the Holy Spirit in so you can hear me say it. So that you know that the spirit that's going, ooh, There it is. The spirit that's going to rule and reign over this broadcast is going to be the spirit of the Lord and not my flesh. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, oh God. Listen, I'm putting on my whole armor. I I feel there's a segue here. We need to talk about the whole armor of God. Amen. Glory to God. 
We are going to start with the belt of truth. I want you to put it on. You're going to cover your waist with truth, and that's Jesus Christ. You are going to cover yourselves with the breastplate of righteousness, and it is not self-righteousness. It is righteousness through Christ Jesus. You're going to shod, cover your feet, put on the preparation of the gospel of peace. Did you know there was a gospel of peace? Hallelujah. Next, the Bible says, above all, taking on the shield of faith. Hey, this is my favorite one. The Bible says that when you put on your shield of faith, 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 hear me well, not faith in you and your strength, but faith in God, faith in Jesus Christ, faith, hallelujah, in the spirit of God moving through you, in you, with you, leading you, guiding you. Your faith is in the word of God, the truth, the way, the life. Jesus is all of that. Jesus is the word of God. When you put on that shield of faith, you're saying, God, ain't no fear coming here today. That shield of faith is going to protect you, the Bible says, from all all, A-L-L, the fiery darts of the wicked one, the devil, the adversary, the enemy. And finally, taking on, no, <laughs> not finally, you're going to put on your helmet of salvation, forgive me please, covering your head with salvation. Jesus is there as well, as well. You want your salvation to be protected so that you don't operate in your mind and your thoughts and your flesh. Finally taking on the shield, the sword of the spirit, Lord have mercy, the sword of the spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit speak. The last part of your whole armor is your sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. All right, we cook. Let's go. Amen. Hallelujah. I apologize for the noise in the background. Oh God, pride comes before destruction. If that don't wake you up, I don't know what will. I'm saying to you, destruction is coming and it's on the pathway because of pride. You must deal with that. Allow the Lord to deliver you from pride. I know I hear you saying, I'm not proud. That comment is proud. <laughs> Listen, let the Lord deliver you. Pride is dangerous. It's deadly. Look at our world. Pride everywhere. Look at war. What you think is a part of war? Pride. Lord help us. All right, let's, let's move on so I don't digress here. Number four, fear of judgment or differences. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Fear of judgment or differences. Who's judging you? Here we go again. There's a righteous judgment, which happens through God and his word. And then there's man's way of judging, which is based on man's thoughts, man's ways, man's ideas, man's plans. Differences in beliefs. We see it right now, as a matter of fact, up to this election. Oh, God. <laughs> Backgrounds or lifestyles can make people hesitant to connect. Do you know how many people will no longer be friends because of people saying who they're going to vote for or why you shouldn't vote for this one or why you should vote for that one? Yeah. We will throw people away for stuff like that. My Lord, when the word of God says that the government is on the shoulders of Jesus Christ and he is king. Hallelujah. Listen. Oh, Lord, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Fearing misunderstanding or judgment. That's what it is. How does this impact our lives? When people allow differences to define relationships, it leads to prejudice 
and division, hindering genuine connections. Oh, we don't know anything about that. We've never heard such a thing. That's, that's just foolishness, Paul Ware. Hmm. If you're alive and you're listening, you know it's real. It's all over the world. It doesn't mean we stay here, right? It doesn't mean we are going to live with this yoke of bondage. If we've been broken away from it, we are not going back. Paul says, don't you go back to that. Don't you get entangled in that again. Lord, help us. And lastly, inability to forgive. Oh, sisters, my dear brothers, if there's someone that you are holding hostage in your heart or in your mind because you can't seem to forgive them, you're harming yourself more than you are them. Why do I say that? Because scripture tells us if we don't forgive others, God himself will not forgive us. Hmm. I don't know about you, but I need to be in good standing with God. And so if it's somebody I need to forgive, let's do it. Lord, I forgive them. I release them. They owe me nothing. People don't owe you anything. They owe you nothing. As a matter of fact, they've already moved on. You're hanging on to something that's just keeping you bound right? That's what the yoke does. It chokes you. It keeps you in a posture that you don't even have control over yourself. Ooh, Holy Spirit, you are being choked. You are in a chokehold by unforgiveness, right? You might even feel it in your body. Some, ooh, I'm, ooh. I'm hearing asthma. I'm hearing thyroid problems. I'm hearing uh, laryngitis, tonsillitis, things of the neck. Mmm, Jesus. Even your shoulders and the back of your neck. A stiff neck. Ooh. Lord, deliver us today. Please heal and deliver us today. Oh God, oh God, we need you. We need you. Listen, forgive these people. I hear you, you're saying, but I can't. You don't know what they did. I don't, but I do, do know what God said. If you don't forgive them, God will not forgive you. Listen, help me, Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. I know you need scripture. You think I'm saying something that is not what God has, has said. Oh, no, we're going to get the word. Because I don't want you to think it's me. I need you to go to the Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. What does the Bible say about forgiveness? I don't remember the scripture address off the top of my head, but it's in my heart. Let's get it in your heart, too. Hallelujah. Yep. Mark 11 and 25. Let me write that down. Mark 11 and 25. That's your scripture. Let me read it to you. It says, and whenever, and this is ESV, whenever you stand praying, forgive. If you have anything against anyone, so that your father also, who, excuse me, is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. So he's acknowledging, I know they trespassed against you. So when you're praying, you know, you're praying all these prayers, midnight prayer, 3 a.m., you're on the wall, you're on every prayer watch, right? Every three hours, you on on a watch. you praying, 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 going in for people. But there's someone you have not forgiven. In all your praying, make sure you forgive people. Listen, I walk right. Anytime something comes in my head, if I can remember to quickly, uh-uh, Lord, I forgive them. Mm -mm. I forgive them. I forget. You got to release them. Be holding those, trying to hold people in that same yoke of bondage you in. Release people. Forgive them. Has God ever forgiven you for something you've done? I bet he has. Let him do it. Come on, y'all. We got to be free. There's so much God has for us to do. We need to be as free as we can be. 
to go and do the work of the Lord, the will of the Lord through his word. Amen. This thing is real. Lack of forgiveness creates a sense of separation and emotional walls. <laughs> emotional walls. Walls divide. There's division. Division is destructive. All of the Bible talks about the result of division, my Lord. All right. What's the impact? It leads to bitterness. It goes to the heart. Mm, 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 mm. It can cloud your perspective and it makes it difficult to show love and compassion holding on to grudges, unresolved anger. Oh my God. It's evil. It's wicked. So Father, on today, I thank you for this opportunity to read your word, talk about your word, make it plain, make it relative so that people can connect to your living word, your son, Jesus Christ, so that we know which way to go, which way not to go. Amen. I'm asking you to petition the father. Vulnerability, fear of vulnerability, unresolved past trauma self-centeredness or pride, fear of judgment or differences, inability to forgive. Those five areas, I'm sure there are more. You go on and you pick that up and you take the challenge to find out what else. What else, oh Lord? What is there more? What else is, is in me? It's hiding in me. It could be something from childhood. It could be something from past relationships. It could be somebody at work. It could be your old boss. It could be anything petition the father lord i thank you i lose the blood of jesus i lose lord god a fruit of the spirit a tree of life a garment of praise and the oil of joy a wall of protection lord god and we walk in the truth i lose the truth i lose the spirit of healing in jesus christ let it be so in heaven as it is in the earth matthew 18 and 18 god bless you see you soon Hey there, good evening. This is Paula Ware. I am reporting to you from the Resurrection TV. I am on today to share with you a very shaking dream that I had this past weekend. In this dream, I was with some other people. I am going to share the event that occurred. And uh, the dream was very startling at first but then it became peaceful and then there was this unction to move quickly i was outside and there were others with me and there was this huge bright light that began to appear in the clouds above and it was just a white light and as it grew bigger it looked like a huge sun and when I say gigantic, it, it was extremely large. And the clouds began to part slowly as the light got brighter and bigger. The sunlight looked like a sun. And the clouds that were above began to come down and they turned gray. They formed a circle around us and they began to move in a circular pattern. And as this is happening, the clouds above began to part. And I saw this huge sun that was a face. I saw a body that was in all white. And then hands began to come out of the clouds and move forward. And once that started happening, I realized it was Jesus. He was reaching for us. And as he's reaching for us, the ground turns into a cloud surface and we were standing on a circular cloud. This cloud began to move in this quick motion. It was a circular motion. It was almost like those roller coaster rides where you get into a circular spear shaped thing. You get against the wall and it moves really, really fast and you can't move. Well, we could still move, but it was on the bottom of, of us. It was the 
the ground had turned to clouds and it was moving really, really flat, fast. And we realized it's Jesus. And then there was this, this fear that began to creep in. And I realized, oh my God, Jesus has returned. He's come for us. And there was this trembling. It was, it was a reverential fear. It was not um, like a, a snake or something is chasing me. It was this fear that the time has come. We weren't expecting it. Just as the Bible says. And as we're running, um, there was um, other, there were others in front of me. And we're just, we're yelling for one another by name. So it was people that I was familiar with and we're, we're calling each other by name. But the noise, I'm saying noise, the sound that these clouds in motion made and the, the floor going so quickly in this circular pattern, there was this almost like a roaring. And that was intimidating. And it was as if we couldn't get close enough. The more we ran, the harder we ran, that we were just not close enough to Jesus. And before me, I even saw someone running really, really fast ahead of us. And quickly as this floor is turning fast, they were thrown off. And I woke myself up. I made myself wake up because I was terrified. At that point, I realized what was happening, that Jesus had come and we weren't prepared. And so my message today is just that. As I sat with the father later on, I wept. I wept for half a day because I was so sad to think that Jesus had come and we missed him. We did not get to enter into the clouds with Jesus. And so I sat with the father. I asked, what was this floor, this circular floor that was moving so quickly in this circular pat pattern? right, with these clouds, these great clouds circling, all of these clouds, there's just this motion, commotion even, if you will, happening. And um, the Holy Spirit told me that the floor that we were trying to run on was a threshing floor. And if you know anything about a threshing floor, you know that it's used to separate the wheat from the tear. And I am here today to ask you to be mindful it's time to prepare. There's an urgent, urgent unction for us to prepare for the return of Jesus Christ, right? We're seeing all these different things happening. The world is in an uproar. There are uh, tumultuous things happening daily, even in different parts of the world. And my heart is truly sobbing. This weekend, I was in a very somber, somber spirit, um, just this heaviness of knowing that the message was that we're not prepared and many will miss Jesus. Many will be on that threshing floor thinking that they are going to be lifted up into the clouds with Jesus, but quickly, just like that, we'll miss it. And the message is to prepare. The message is also to prepare our children. There was... Um, the appearance of uh, children being along the threshing floor as well. And that put some uh, heaviness on my heart, a, a different type of heaviness to think of the innocent children that um, are not prepared spiritually who are almost adults. You know, we go from this, this stage of tiny babies to toddlers and and they're growing and they're growing and and we have to pour into them as soon as we can jesus christ we have to make sure that they know who he is of course we know that there's obviously grace for babies and and small small children who may not have that comprehension but it's it's extremely important for us to pour into our children as well. As we are preparing, we need to make sure that the children and the youth are prepared as well. And so on today, I'm here to deliver, deliver that message. That was the dream. 
Um, if there's someone else who has an additional part, I'm asking that you share that with us because as the Bible tells us, we prophesy in part. God didn't give me a completed version of this dream, but he gave me enough to have a message to sound the alarm. It's time. We don't have much time. Time is now. So again, I thank you for tuning in and I pray that you will take this to heart and go before the Father, try the Spirit, test the Spirit as the Bible tells us. I am just a vessel. I'm a messenger. I'm relaying a dream to you. God, speak to us in dreams, in, in visions, uh, dreams of the night, visions of the night. And I am just a vessel who wants to be obedient. I say just. Um, take that into perspective. I am a vessel of the Lord. I have surrendered my life to be a vessel of the Lord. Amen. And I take it seriously and I don't take it lightly that the Father would allow me to witness that and to relay the message. So let's praise God. Let's continue to pray without ceasing. Let's fast and pray. And remember, be on watch. God bless you.